Russian President Vladimir Putin and Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko met on Thursday in Moscow. The meeting followed Putin and Lukashenko's August 30th phone call discussing the possibility of Belarus further expanding its Russian-made air defense technology. Western scrutiny of Belarus has increased as of late after Minsk sentenced opposition figure Maria Kolesnikova to 11 years in prison, triggering further condemnation from the EU and US. Lukashenko's continued crackdown on opposition coincides with Belarus's ongoing political, economic, and military cooperation with Russia. As Lukashenko continues to suppress opposition and incite tensions, expect EU and NATO attention to center on the upcoming Zapad joint military exercises between Belarus and Russia, which aim to counter potential NATO offensives. In addition, Lukashenko will likely continue negotiating economic relief measures with Putin, as the sentencing of Kolesnikova and growing authoritarianism will likely result in additional EU sanctions. Such measures will likely push Belarus towards ceding sovereignty to Russia in exchange for greater security and administrative support. On Sunday, September 5th, President Alpha Conde of Guinea was arrested after the military stormed the presidential palace as part of the latest coup in West Africa. Led by Colonel Mamadi Doumbouya, the military seized power from what was viewed by many Guineans as a corrupt and kleptocratic regime illustrated by Conde's amendment to constitutional term limits, allowing him to secure a third term last year. In terms of governing, Dumboya announced the dissolution of the current government and constitution, promising to replace both with a more democratic version, but laying out a timeline for neither. However, military officers have since been installed to administer each of Guinea's eight regions. Although Dumboya has denied the idea that the new government would disrupt the mining industry, the price of bauxite hit a 10-year high on Monday, indicating a major supply disruption of aluminum in the short term. Combined with the potential for sanctions to arise after heavy condemnation from regional and international organizations, Guinea will likely face major economic shortfalls in the long term unless Dumboya can win the hearts and minds of the international community. The Bartia Kisan Song, or BKS, Farmers' Union held nationwide protests this week in response to liberalizing reforms enacted by the Modi government last September. These protests stem from policies enacted by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, which loosened rules around the sale, pricing, and storage of farming commodities. Led by a fear that these reforms will favor large-scale industrialized farms and weaken independent farming operations, farmers from Punjab, Haryana, and Uttar Pradesh have organized over the past months, which has disrupted daily life in major cities. While the BKS union wishes to completely repeal the reforms, Prime Minister Modi has not given in to their demands, leading to a stalemate in ongoing negotiations. Expect the protests to yield little productive outcomes owing to Modi's rejection of a complete repeal. Despite this, Modi's party is experiencing increased electoral competition, exacerbating protest pressures from farmers, due to a fledging no vote to BJP campaign. This has led to several electoral defeats for Prime Minister Modi's Bhartia Janata Party, particularly in the key state of West Bengal. As such, expect the BKS to intensify protest action in a bid to force concessions for Modi's weakened position in the coming months. <laughs> 